Hundreds of residents lined the streets of the downtown area as the Orion Lighted Christmas Parade helped usher in the holiday spirit. The Lake Orion Lions helped make Christmas special for dozens of families in need with baskets full of food and toys. He's a mean one, but Mr. Grinch put smiles on the faces of little ones at a popular annual event. And almost 150 runners and walkers braved the snow and ice to take part in Orion Township Snow Dash on the Polyon Trail. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. We'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. The very first Lighted Christmas Parade took place in 1995 and has become a beloved Lake Orion tradition. The community should have celebrated the parade's 25th year in 2020, but organizers were forced to cancel it due to COVID. In 2021, the parade was scheduled to take place on December 4th, but it was decided to postpone it in response to the tragic events that took place at Oxford High School on November 30th. After facing these challenges, the Orion Light at Christmas Parade returned to downtown Lake Orion, as did the parade's primary fundraiser. On the evening of Friday, December 17th, the community gathered at Gall and Buen GMC in Orion Township for the Holly Jolly Folly, the major fundraising event that helps make the Light at Christmas Parade possible. More than 350 attendees enjoyed a buffet dinner and entertainment and took part in a silent auction made up of items donated by local businesses and community groups. You know, it's a very special night it has been for us for a number of years, and it's really good to have it back. Um, we had to postpone it, as everybody knows, for a couple of weeks. And with all the sadness in the communities, tonight's a night where maybe we can have a, a normal, a regular night as much as possible. So we think this is the right thing to do, and, and we're happy to have the community here. Right now, I'm I'm happy. I mean, it's it's everybody seems to be looking like they're having a good time. There was a lot of interaction with people, like they hadn't seen each other for a while. Um, I thought it was great, and I think this is a great event. We probably have about 350, 360 people here, which is a fantastic turnout, especially being that we canceled two weeks ago. Um, so I'm, I'm very, very happy. I'm very happy with everybody being able to do what they can do and be here tonight. Money is raised for the Light at Christmas Parade through ticket sales and proceeds generated from the silent auction. Gall and Butte GMC picks up all costs related to hosting the event. This pays for the parade. I mean, we do get, we do get people donate money and we do get people that, to donate different things, but between the dinner and the silent auction prizes, this pays for the parade. Um, we're like everybody else. The costs for us have gone way up, um, more than we expected. And last year not having a parade and not knowing we were having a parade, that sort of put us in a back burner because we didn't get those donations that we had gotten before. We didn't have what Gollings does with us by you know, sponsoring this night and hosting it and paying for everything. All the money um, that is uh, raised here tonight, which uh, I'll get a little plug in for us, Golling Buick GMC pays for all the, the event tonight. And then all the money that's raised through ticket sales funds the parade plus Hopefully we got enough money left over after we fund the parade that we can give some scholarship money or some other donations in the community. So this is a big night. Twenty-four hours later, residents began lining the streets of downtown Lake Orion for the lighted Christmas parade. Announcers John Cooper and Rock and Ronnie took the stage at Broadway and Front Street as four beams of light reflected on the clouds overhead to honor the Oxford High School students we lost. Leading the parade was Lake Orion Police Chief Harold Rossman in the department's vintage 1941 police car. His passenger was honored veteran Bob Watros, U.S. Navy veteran and park manager at the Orion Veterans Memorial. And named 2021 Citizens of the Year was local businessman and respected community member Matt Pfeiffer. The parade grand marshals were the Reard family, made up of Robert, Donna, Christine, and Haley for their service to the community. Dozens of colorful floats, community groups, and businesses embraced this year's theme, Christmas in Toyland, and costume characters thrilled the little ones standing in the snow. 
The parade is so important, and we, we learned this last year during COVID when we couldn't have a parade. And Bill Kokanis and his team put together a deal where they drove around with Santa Claus into the neighborhoods, and it was really cool and it was well thought out, but it just wasn't the parade. And, and I think it's very important that people are able to get out there on the streets of, of Orion and, and be a part of this. I mean, I, I've heard that sometimes we have as many as 10,000 people out there, and, and that's got to make people feel good to be out there and be a part of it. I'm, I'm hoping with the community that it, it brings out the love that we have for everybody and that the, the community can come together and do something, not only knowing what had happened, but also having it, this is supposed to be a happy part of the year. So we're trying to do that and make it a little happier so that way people will have a better Christmas than what they could have had. And as always, Santa and Mrs. Claus guided their reindeer and sleigh through the streets of downtown Lake Orion to wish the community a Merry Christmas. Many local families would struggle to get through the holiday season if it wasn't for the generous support from local organizations like the Lake Orion Lions Club. The COVID pandemic has hit the organization's fundraising efforts hard, but they still managed to make Christmas special for those in need. On Friday, December 17th, members of the Lake Orion Lions Club were joined by family and friends at the CERT building to begin sorting food and toys for families in need. As donations poured in, dozens of volunteers of all ages sorted food into various categories before packing them into boxes for families and seniors. Well, people look forward to this. Uh, people come out and they work hard. Um, you know, we, everybody knows the routine, so it's it's not like they need a lot of direction. Um, we've we've kind of developed a routine over the years and. Everybody just kind of jumps in. It's kind of cool. Uh, it's, it's, it's community. The Lions Club works with the school district to create a list of families in need and coordinates with other community organizations to make sure efforts aren't being duplicated. Normally, the Lions Club hosts a huge fundraiser and auction in November to support their Christmas basket program, but the event was canceled in 2021, so they had to resort to other fundraising methods. The auction is our, our primary fundraiser for the basket program. Um, so we've had to kind of get a little more creative. We started a GoFundMe page. We, uh, we were getting donations on our club website. Um, we've had some generous donations from individuals. Um, so we're, we're able to meet our goal um, despite not having the auction. But I'm hoping we can have that again next year. If you would like to support their efforts, you can visit LakeOrionLions.org and click on the Donate button. You can also find them on Facebook. We all know Santa, Rudolph, and Frost the Snowman are beloved characters that get children excited about the holiday season, but there's one character who is steadily winning that popularity contest, which is odd considering he's a mean one. ONTV's Joe Johnson explains. On the morning of Saturday, December 11th, Orion Township hosted its annual Breakfast with the Grinch event at the Orion Center. 120 kids and their family members were split up over two sessions and were able to enjoy a variety of activities. This is our Christmas event for the community. Um, we used to do a Santa event, but we wanted to do something different and a little unique, and so we thought that the Grinch would be great. So we have the Grinch here so they can get pictures with him. We have um, reindeer food they can make, which they make and sprinkle out on the lawn um, for, on Christmas Eve. Uh, we have an ornament craft and a coloring book and a countdown craft and breakfast as well. Orion Township hosted its first Grinch breakfast in 2016 at the Orient Center, and the event has become quite popular over the past few years thanks to the Dr. Seuss books, TV special, and movies. The 2018 Illumination movie, The Grinch, played on the TV monitors at the Orient Center. The Grinch has become definitely a lot more popular in the last couple of years, um, and it's great to see um, you know people come out and celebrate Christmas in a different way, and I'm glad The Grinch is making a comeback. For information about upcoming parks and rec events, visit orionparks.com. You can also find them on Facebook. From the Orion Center, this is Joe Johnson reporting for TV News. Thanks, Joe. 
It takes a special kind of person to climb out of bed on a cold winter morning and take part in a 5K race, but there was no shortage of participants in Orion Township's latest race. On the morning of Sunday, December 19th, approximately 150 runners and walkers gathered at the Orion Center to take part in Orion Township's Snow Dash. After checking in, participants lined up for the 9 a.m. start time. Numbers are way up this year. I'm not sure why. Um, I'm just going to guess that summer was kind of a downer and everybody's ready to be outside and be active. The first snow dash took place in 2017 with approximately 80 runners taking part. In 2020, organizers were forced to go virtual with the race due to the pandemic and participants were encouraged to log their own times. The in-person race returned with 133 pre-registered participants with about a dozen more race day walk-ups. The course took runners and walkers onto a snow-covered poly -in trail. It's a true out and back, so start and finish is right here at the Orient Center. They go down to the trailhead, they go south on the poly -in trail, keep following it down until they have to turn around and come back. Conditions are beautiful. We had it groomed this morning because of the snow yesterday. It's a beautiful course. It's a beautiful day. Crossing the finish line first was 29-year-old Alexander Pollock of Ligorian with a time of 1820.5. The first female to finish was 35-year-old Maria Brandon of Lake Orion. She finished with a time of 2104.6. All participants received a medal at the finish line. The Snow Dash was made possible thanks to sponsors Buffalo Wild Wings, Farm Bureau Insurance, Canalis Agency, Genesis Credit Union, Monk Orthodontics, T-Mobile, and Waste Management. It's hard to believe the Orion Township Board of Trustees held its last in-person meeting at Township Hall in March of 2020. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, meetings were held virtually until August of 2020. Meetings were held in the Orion Center while construction proceeded on the new municipal complex. 16 months later, Township staff and elected officials now have a new home. On the evening of Monday, December 6th, the Orion Township Board of Trustees held its first meeting in the brand new municipal complex located on Jocelyn Road near Scripps. Although there are some finishing touches that still need to happen, Orion Township staff moved into the building on November 29th and the Oakland County Sheriff's Office will be moving in soon. Every curveball that could have been thrown at us was thrown at us in this whole process and here we are. I mean, we are virtually on schedule, we're under budget, which is, I mean, in this going through a pandemic, it's never, we've never lived through, at least in our lifetimes, construction material costs tripled at times during this project. Um, trades were, you know, couldn't get people to come to work and with work stoppages, it was, the fact that we're here is, is literally uh, miraculous. <laughs> Orion Township had been operating out of its former location since 1974, with the Oakland County Sheriff's Office opening a substation in the building in 1997. Due to a wide variety of reasons, it was decided that it was time for a change. Orion Township relied on a creative revenue stream to fund the $18 million project, and dignitaries broke ground on the new facility in September of 2020. This project had been discussed since the late 90s, and the reason it could never kind of get off the ground is because it was always, how do we pay for it? And really there's two, the, the, we got we to gotta raise taxes, we have to do a special millage or a bond. And um, this board made it pretty clear to me a few years ago, like that wasn't going to fly, we got to find another way to do that. So we can say unequivocally that um, when you come to the counter and pay your taxes this, this December, or you know, that, that just got mailed to you, those tax dollars are not being used to fund this building. We're fully funding the, per, the construction of this building and paying it off um, through the revenue that we're getting from the landfill, from the host fee, uh, from the Eagle Valley landfill that we have, and then also from the marijuana revenues. Those two revenue streams fully fund uh, the servicing the bond debt, like basically our mortgage payment. So we're really excited. Um, you know, that's, that's the reason a few years ago that I brought the concept of bringing these marijuana facilities to the township board. It was a little risky at the time, uh, but the reason we did that was because we were going to generate revenue in order to pay for this building that we need, desperately needed.
This place smells amazing. <laughs> and the reason we needed to move out of that old complex was it was not healthy in the environment. There was a lot of smells there that were old. There was some mold, no black mold, but it was old. And we needed to make some changes that way. But brand new heating and cooling, brand new environment for our residents to come into just makes it inviting and warm. And I do remember the orange carpet and there was an old, old orange vinyl couch in the employee break room. So I've been there since 89, so I remember some changes taking place from then till now, and it's been phenomenal. Chris Barnett has done an awesome job just facilitating this, and he's been really the driving force behind this. Orion Township plans on hosting a grand opening and open house sometime at the beginning of the new year, and are planning to demolish the previous building in February or March of 2022. The grounds will become part of the existing Civic Center Park. On the morning of December 7, 1941, Japanese forces launched a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor that killed more than 2,400 Americans, including civilians, and damaged or destroyed 20 naval ships and over 300 planes. The next day, President Roosevelt described it as a date which will live in infamy. On the evening of Tuesday, December 7, the Lake Orion community was invited to come to the Orion Center for a ceremony commemorating the 80th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. Orion Veterans Memorial Vice Chairman Bob Smith welcomed those in attendance and introduced the keynote speaker, Professor John Todd, a U.S. Army veteran who served in the Vietnam War, he gave a history lesson on the Constitution and its connection to the U.S. response to the attack on Pearl Harbor. Well, as I said in the talk, it's Pearl Harbor, again, was the catalyst that gave us the great generation, the greatest generation. It, it, was a, it became the spark, the, the mainspring for our great unity. And so I like to look at it as hoping that it will continue to give us unity and purpose. Following the address, a candle ceremony honored the lives lost on December 7, 1941, representing the Navy, Marine Corps, Army, and civilians. The ceremony ended with a gun salute and the playing of taps. Uh, I'm very impressed. I lived in Rochester for 35 years. I lived in Oxford for 10. I now live in Oakland Township. Uh, I never had much contact with Laco, but these people are great. And I know I've heard that the memorial they have is absolutely beautiful. So they're, ins they're an inspiring group. I was honored to be here. And finally, when you're out doing some last minute shopping, you might want to consider picking up a winter coat or some accessories for someone in need. On Wednesday, November 22nd, representatives of the Knights of Columbus arrived at Northern Wholesale Flooring on Indianwood Road to drop off 24 brand new coats as part of Operation Warm. Needless to say, uh, myself and, and all of these gentlemen have been involved for years giving back to the community. And this is just one small token if you want to count it that way, because everybody out there has a need. I mean, we've got, uh, we're all participating also with uh, one of the churches, uh, Christ Redeemer, for example, as their St. Uh, Nicholas project. Everybody's out there trying to do something, and the more we do, the better off it is. We could have done it uh, anywhere in, in the state, but we decided to do it right here in our home community. Operation Warren began three years ago in response to request from Constance Miller, who helps provide coats and meals to those in need in the community. Operation Warren accepts coats, hats, gloves, scarves, and boots. She reached out and asked if I could help because they were really having a hard time getting enough to fill the need and uh, we, uh, we jumped in and uh, a little bit the first year but last year just uh, was incredible the amount of uh, items we had. So uh, we're going to run with this as long as we can and um, uh, we're really happy to, uh, to be able to help on such a 
good local grassroots effort. This is one of the hidden successes of the community. The fact that they, they do it quietly for all practical purposes, little did I know how much they do for the community and, and I'm very glad to see that everybody is stepping up, not just the Knights of Columbus or some of the churches and things like that, private individuals, private businesses, all of them contribute to make, make it a better world. If you would like to make a donation to Operation Warm, swing by Northern Wholesale Flooring and Floor Trader Outlet located at 118 Indian Wood Road near M24. For hours of operation or for more information, call 248-693-9457 or visit Northern Flooring on Facebook. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News, the final episode of 2021. On our next episode, we'll look back at the news and events that helped shape the Orient area over the past year on ONTV News, the year in review. Until then, happy holidays and happy new year from all of us here at ONTV. I'm Stacey Calloway, thanks for watching and good night. <laughs>